know that if we acquire a new asset, any dollars we spent to put that asset into service, like installation fees, sales tax, or even attorney's fees to look at the contract, get capitalized. Well, the same is true for interest. So if we take out a specific loan to finance a new project, the interest on that loan will get capitalized. And in fact, if we have any interest that we incur, we get to capitalize that. The trick is we can't capitalize imaginary interest. All right, let's walk through an example. First of all, where does this come from? It comes from the ASC, uh, topic 835, subtopic 20, section five, paragraph one. And it talks about the fact that we know that we have to include any costs necessary to bring an asset uh, into condition and location necessary for its intended use. Those have to be capitalized and that includes interest. So when do we start capitalizing? First of all, expenditures for the asset have to have started to have been made. Secondly, activities that are necessary to get the asset ready for its intended use are in progress. You have to start on the project. And three, interest is being incurred, either, either specifically from a loan for this project or from just our general coffers that we're incurring interest expense as a corporation. So what are the simple facts for this uh, example? The company's going to build the Lupe building. They're going to buy the land from the contractor for $100,000. They're going to build the building for $1.4 million, and it's going to take them a year to build it. They're going to start on January 1st and finish on December 31st. They're going to borrow $750,000 in the form of a 15% note to finance the project. All right, let's see how interest capitalization works. Okay, one of the first steps is to figure out the weighted average accumulated expenditures. It sounds complicated. It's a lot easier when I think of it as how long did we borrow the money for? So we write a check to the contractor for $210,000 on January 1st. How long during that year did we borrow the money? Well, we borrowed it for the whole year. So on January 1st, we cut a check for $210,000 and we borrowed that money for 12 out of the 12 months. So one times 210,000 is $210,000. On March 1st, we cut a check to the contractor for $300,000. How long did we borrow that money for? 10 months. March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December is 10 months. So 10 over 12 times 300,000 is a $250,000 weighted average accumulated expenditure. Why don't you pause this video and see if you can do the calculation for May. I hope you got it. Uh, since that we cut a check on May 1st, that means we effectively borrowed money for eight months, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, eight twelves times 540,000 is 360. And then these examples in the textbook always have a payment on December 31st. We, we don't owe any interest on the day that we borrow the money. So since we don't owe any interest, it's zero over 12 times the 450. So you add all these guys up. Sure enough, that accounts for the million five we said we were going to spend. And we have a weighted average accumulated expenditures of $820,000. Well, now what? Well, if our weighted average accumulated expenditures had been exactly $750,000, we would just use 15% for our calculations. But since we just calculated that the weighted average accumulated expenditures is $820,000, we're going to have to worry about that other $70,000. So we're going to look at our other debt and we're going to say that we effectively are financing another $70,000 from that debt. We've got some 10% stuff, uh, and we've got some 12% stuff, and we're going to have to figure out what the weighted average interest rate is for this other debt, and we'll use that weighted average interest rate to finance that other $70,000. Okay, a couple different ways to do this calculation. You can say uh, we have a note, a 10% note at $550,000. A year's worth of interest on that would be $55,000. We have a 12% note with a principal of $600,000. One year of interest would be seventy-two. dollars So we have a total principal of $1,150,000 of other debt with a total of interest on that debt of $127,000. So we take $127,000, divide it by $1,150,000, and we get 11.04%. But there's another way to do a weighted average. We could say that 47.83% uh, of our debt, that's $550,000 divided by $1,150,000 is at 10%. And 52.17% of our debt is at 
uh, 12%, that's 600,000 divided by 1,150,000. We add those two together and we'll get the same answer, 11.04. So now we know that the debt that we borrowed for our project specifically has a coupon of 15% and our other debt has a weighted average of 11.04%. So now what do we do? Now we figure out how much interest we capitalize, how much interest expense do we add to this project? And we knew, remember we calculated that the uh, weighted average accumulated expenditures total was $820,000. We specifically borrowed $750,000 at 15%. So that gave us $112,500 in interest. We also uh, needed to get to eight hundred twenty, dollars so we used, theoretically, $70,000 of our other debt to finance the rest of that project. That other debt had a weighted average interest rate of 11.04. So that gives us 7728. We add those together and we get $120,228 of avoidable interest. Interest that we would not have to incur had we not undertaken this project. All right, and so what the heck do those journal entries look like? So remember we set up this uh, simple example so that all the interest got paid at the end of the year on December 31st to make things a little simpler. So on January 1st, we pay the contractor $210,000 for the land and the building, so we credit cash for 210. On March 1st, we cut the general contractor another check for $300,000 for uh, progress payments on the building. May 1st, we cut another check for $540,000, debit building, uh, credit uh, cash for $540,000. Then we cut the then we cut the contractor another check for $450,000 on December 31st, and. Uh, Debit building for four hundred fifty thousand, credit cash for four fifty. Now let's deal with the interest. Well, we're cutting the check to all the lenders for two hundred thirty-nine thousand five hundred dollars. That's one hundred twelve thousand five hundred on our construction note. That's fifty-five thousand on that five hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars note with a ten percent coupon, and that's six hundred thousand dollars times twelve percent, or seventy-two thousand, on the ten-year bonds. So that gives us total of 239500 but we're not going to write it all to interest expense. Remember, we decided that some of it gets capitalized. We decided that 120228 gets capitalized as part of our cost of our building. And the balance goes on the income statement as interest. So we could, on the face of our income statement, show total interest expense of 239500 minus 120228 that gets capitalized, but more, most likely, we're just going to talk about this in the footnote. So this 119,272 will show up on the income statement, and we'll talk about this 120,228 that got capitalized in the footnotes. And so that's all there is to interest capitalization. Remember, you can't uh, capitalize imaginary interest. So if we didn't have that, uh, what did we say, 120,228 dollars worth of interest expense actually incurred? we could to capitalize it. We'd have to capitalize only the amount of interest expense we actually incurred. All right, I hope that helps.